I, Michael D. Proctor, being duly sworn, depose, and state that the following is true to the best of my knowledge. 1. I, Trooper Michael Proctor, am a Massachusetts State Police Officer and have been a police officer since 2013. I am presently assigned to the State Police Detective Unit at the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office and have been so since September 2019. During that time, I have investigated and processed serious and violent crimes, including murder, suicides, sudden, suspicious, unattended deaths, and drug investigations. Through these investigations, I have participated in the execution of search warrants from which various types of evidence have been seized. I am trained in criminal investigation, including homicide death investigations, crime scene investigation, collection of physical evidence, crime scene processing, and the investigations of such cases. I have received specialized training to obtain and analyze cellular telephone data and call detail records supporting criminal investigations. I have a Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice from Anna Maria College. In addition to my assignment in the Division of Investigative Services, I have been assigned to the Division of Field Services, working in Troop C and Troop H. 2. Based upon the information contained in the numbered paragraphs below which are the product of my investigation and my discussions with Massachusetts state troopers and officers with the Canton Police Department involved in the investigation. I submit that I have probable cause for an arrest warrant to be issued for Karen Redd. I believe that evidence of the crime of manslaughter, a violation of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 265, Section 13, Negligent Motor Vehicle Homicide, a violation of Massachusetts General Laws. Chapter 90, Section 24G, and leaving the scene of an accident resulting in death, a violation of Massachusetts Chapter 90, Section 24 exists and seek an arrest warrant for Reed. 3. On January 29, 2022, at approximately 6.04 a.m. Canton Police Department received a 911. A woman reporting a male party, John O'Keefe found in the snow at 34 Fairview Road. At the time of the 911 call, there was heavy snow, and the temperature was in the teens. Officers Suroff and Mullaney were dispatched to the scene along with Canton Fire and EMS. Officer Suroff arrived on the scene and observed three females waving at him. Looking at 34 Fairview from the roadway, the three females were in the left corner of the property. Officer Suroff observed the victim lying on the ground as two of the females were performing CPR. The three females on scene were identified by Canton PD as Karen Reed, Jennifer McCabe and Carrie Roberts. Officer Saraf observed the victim to be cold to the touch, not breathing, and returned to his cruiser to retrieve his AED device. At this time, Canton Fire and EMS arrived on scene and took over first aid. Paramedics transported O'Keefe to Good Samaritan Hospital in Brockton. O'Keefe was determined to be deceased several hours later by Dr. Justin Rice. 4. Lieutenant Paul Gallagher, Det SGT Michael Lank and SGT Sean Good arrived on the scene moments after the 911 call. After the victim was transported to Good Samaritan Hospital, Lt. Gallagher, Det SGT Lank and SGT Good began to search for any evidence. They discovered a broken cocktail-style glass and multiple patches of red that appeared to be blood in the vicinity of the victim. Canton officers secured the glass and six blood samples as evidence. 5. On January 29, 2022, at approximately 11.30 a.m., SGT Buchanick and I requested to speak with Jennifer McCabe, and her husband, Matthew, both agreed to speak with us. We first spoke with Jennifer, who stated she and some friends were at the Waterfall Bar last night in Canton. Jennifer stated her and Matthew arrived at the Waterfall Bar at approximately 9 p.m. At approximately 11 p.m., John and Karen arrived at the Waterfall Bar together. John and Karen have been in a dating relationship for two years and Karen stays at John's house most nights. Jennifer observed Karen walk into the bar holding a glass cup from C.F. McCarthy's with a clear liquid inside what she believed to be a vodka soda drink. Jennifer observed John wearing a baseball hat, jeans, and sneakers. John and Karen were at C.F. McCarthy's bar across the street before going to the Waterfall Bar. Jennifer stated John and Karen appeared to be in a good mood and did not observe any arguing between the two. Jennifer described the atmosphere inside of the bar as friendly and there were no arguments amongst any patrons. As the bar began to close down, everyone was invited back to 34 Fairview Road. Jennifer observed Karen and John leave Waterfall Bar together. As the group was exiting the bar, 
John texted Jennifer where to at 12.14 a.m. Jennifer replied with the address, 34 Fairview Road. At 12.18 a.m., John called Jennifer to ask where the house was located on Fairview Road. While inside the residence, Jennifer observed a black SUV arrive in front of 34 Fairview Road from the front door. Jennifer texted John at 12.31 a.m., hello, and at 12.40 a.m. texted, pull up behind me. Jennifer observed the black SUV move from the initial place the vehicle stopped on the street, near the driveway, and then proceed to the left side of the property. At 12.45 a.m., Jennifer texted John, hello, and then observed the black SUV drive away. Jennifer stated they discovered John in the area where she last observed the SUV, left side. At approximately 4.53 a.m., Jennifer received a phone call from Karen, looking distraught and drove over to Jennifer's house. Karen told Jennifer she last remembered seeing John at the waterfall bar. Jennifer informed Karen she observed John and her leave the bar together. Jennifer drove Karen's vehicle back to John's from her house because Karen was too hysterical to drive and had Carrie Roberts follow them. While driving to John's house Karen stated to Jennifer, could I have hit him, did I hit him? Jennifer stated Karen told her about a cracked tail light on her vehicle. Once they arrived at John's house, Karen had Jennifer look at the cracked tail light. Jennifer described the passenger side, right rear tail light as cracked. Jennifer and Karen entered Carrie's vehicle to look for John. Karen was seated in the back as Carrie drove and Jennifer was seated in the front passenger seat. Jennifer stated they turned onto Fairview Road from Chapman ST, at the time it was snowing heavily creating poor visibility. Jennifer stated just prior to 34 Fairview Road there is a cluster of trees and immediately Karen stated she saw John. Jennifer and Carrie were not able to see John and initially confused by Karen's statement. Jennifer stated Carrie began wiping snow off of John as Karen laid on top of him for warmth and then began CPR. 6. SGT Buchanick and I arrived at Good Samaritan Hospital to view the victim. I observed approximately six bloodied lacerations varying in length on O'Keefe's right arm. The cuts extended from his forearm to bicep. Both of the victim's eyes were swollen shut and black and blue. I observed a cut to the right eyelid area of the victim. The victim's clothing, blue jeans, orange t-shirt, long sleeve shirt and boxer shorts were saturated and contained blood and vomit. I observed one black Nike sneaker with a white Nike logo on the side belonging to the victim. On January 31, 2022, Dr. Irene Scordibello from the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner in Mashpee conducted the autopsy of John O'Keefe. Dr. Scordibello advised of several abrasion to the right forearm, two swollen black eyes, a small cut above the right eye, cut to left side of nose. Approximately two-inch laceration to the back of the head and multiple skull fractures that resulted in bleeding. Dr. Scordibello advised the victim's pancreas was a dark red hypothermia was a contributing factor. Stoughton District Tort. February, 2, 2022. 7. On January 29, 2022 at approximately 12.15 p.m., SGT Buchanick and I conducted the view of Matthew McCabe. Matthew stated he has known John for approximately eight years and met Karen a handful of times. Matthew stated he was at the Waterfall Bar on Saturday night and observed John and Karen enter. Matthew observed John wearing a baseball hat with a curved visor and Karen drinking a clear liquid drink, possibly vodka. Matthew stated everyone was going to 34 Fairview Road from the bar. Matthew entered his vehicle and his wife, Jennifer was on the phone with John telling him to go to 34 Fairview Road. While at the Fairview residence, Matthew observed a large dark SUV pull up on the street. Matthew was looking out the front door and described the SUV initially parked in front of the house. Matthew looked out a window and observed the same vehicle had moved towards the right side of the property. From Matthew's vantage point, inside and through the front door the vehicle was to his right or left side of property if looking at the house from the street. Matthew's last sighting of the vehicle on Fairview Road was in the area of where the victim was discovered. 8. On January 29, 2022 at 5.25 p.m., Troopers Matthew Dunn and David DeChico conducted the interview of Kerry Roberts. At approximately 5 a.m., Carrie received a phone call from Karen stating John did not come home, it was snowing and she was worried. Carrie met Karen at Jennifer McCabe's house and observed Karen to be hysterical. 
Carrie stated she believed Karen was still intoxicated in the morning and told Carrie she did not remember last night. Karen stated, I was so drunk I don't even remember going to your sister's last night. Jennifer's sister lives at 34 Fairview Road. Carrie followed Karen's black Lexus SUV back to John's house. Carrie drove Jennifer and Karen to 34 Fairview to look for John. Carrie described the weather as white-out conditions as they were driving around. As they arrived at 34 Fairview Road, Karen stated, there he is, I see him, from inside the vehicle. Carrie stated only Karen saw John as he was covered in snow and through white-out conditions. Carrie stated after they exited the vehicle Karen stated, I see him. Carrie was still not able to see John at that point due to the weather conditions. Carrie observed John approximately 12 feet from the roadway, swollen right eye with a laceration above it and blood around the nose and mouth. Carrie stated they began CPR and called 911. On February 1, 2022, I, Trooper Proctor spoke with Carrie via phone. Carrie stated on January 29, 2022 at approximately 5 a.m. Karen contacted her. Carrie answered the phone to hear Karen state dead. Carrie, Carrie, I wonder if he's dead. It's snowing, he got hit by a plow. 9. On January 29, 2022 at approximately 4.30 p.m., SGT Buchanick and I arrived at 345. In Dighton, Massachusetts the residence is the home of Karen Reed's parents. Upon arrival, SGT Buchanick and I observed a large black Lexus SUV, bearing Massachusetts registration, 3GC684. The vehicle is registered to Karen Red. The vehicle was parked outside in the driveway, in front of a garage door. We observed the rear right passenger side tail light to be shattered. A large red plastic piece was missing from the tail light. SGT Buchanick and I were invited inside by the homeowners. Karen was seated on a living room couch and agreed to speak with us. Karen stated she met the victim at C.F. McCarthy's bar in Canton at approximately 9 p.m. on January 29, 2022. The victim was there with several friends prior to Karen's arrival. Karen stated the victim was consuming beer and she was drinking vodka sodas. Karen described the glassware she was drinking out of as a vase style. Karen stated her and the victim left C.F. McCarthy's and went to Waterfall Bar. Karen stated she did not leave C.F. McCarthy's or enter the Waterfall Bar with a glass or drink. Karen and the victim were at the Waterfall for approximately one hour. During that time there were no altercations or arguments amongst anyone. When Karen and the victim left the Waterfall Bar they were invited to a house on Fairview Road. Karen stated she dropped the victim at the house on Fairview and went home since she was having stomach issues at the previous bar. Karen stated as she dropped the victim off she made a three-point turn in the street and left. Karen did not see the victim enter the house. Karen told investigators she first observed the broken tail light in the morning and did not know how she broke it last night. While at the two bars, Karen stated she did not observe any injuries cuts on the victim's arms and the victim did not suffer any injuries cuts while at the bars. When Karen discovered the victim in the morning she observed him lying face up, snow on his legs, eyes swollen and blood coming from his nose and mouth. Karen began providing mouth to mouth. Karen attempted to contact the victim throughout the night, calling and texting him numerous times with no response. Karen informed investigators her and the victim were in a verbal argument that morning over what Karen fed the victim's niece for breakfast. 10. On January 30, 2022 at approximately 1 p.m., SGT Buchanick and I interviewed firefighter, Katie McLaughlin at the Canton Police Department. Katie was assigned to Station 1 on Saturday, January 29, 2022. Katie stated at approximately 5 a.m. Canton Fire and EMS were dispatched to 34 Fairview Road for a mail party discovered in the snow and unresponsive. Upon arrival, Katie observed the victim being worked on by paramedics. Once inside the ambulance, Katie observed the victim to have trauma to face and eye area and vomit in mouth. Katie observed the victim wearing jeans, socks and one black Nike sneaker. The victim's shirts were cut and chest exposed for chest compressions. Katie exited the ambulance to speak with Karen as to the victim's identity I and any medical history. Katie described Karen as a white female, approximately 5 feet 5 inches, thin, brown blonde hair, brown eyes and early 40s in age. Karen provided the victim's name and date of birth. 
Katie asked Karen if she knew where the victim suffered the trauma to his face. Karen turned to her friend and stated, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. 11. On January 29, 2022 at approximately 5.30 p.m., SGT Buchanick and I seized the black low. Bearing Massachusetts registration, 3GC684, VIN, JTJFY7AX1M4343547 from the driveway of 345 Country Hill Drive, Dighton. Diamond Towing transported the vehicle to the Canton Police Department where it was secured in their Sally Port garage. SGT Buchanick and I traveled behind the tow truck from the residence to the Canton Police Department. 12. On February 1, 2022 at 9 a.m. members from the Massachusetts State Police Crime Scene Services, Collision Analysis Reconstruction Section and Laboratory Chemist processed the Black Lexus. Bearing Massachusetts Registration, 3GC684 at the Canton Police Department. Fragments of broken glass was observed on the rear bumper of the vehicle. The rear right passenger side tail light was shattered and pieces missing from the red and clear areas. On the right side of the rear tailgate a deep scratch and minor dent was observed. On the right side of the rear bumper, above a small red light two scratches were observed in one area where the paint was chipped off. Troopers from cars performed a rapid acceleration, forward and reverse and noted there was no deficiencies with the braking system. A training figure resembling a human, approximately six feet in height was placed behind the Lexus. The vehicle was operated by members of cars and documented with video by crime scene services. The vehicle was placed in reverse and started to travel towards the training figure. The rearview camera was operating properly providing a 180-degree visual. As the Lexus traveled closer to the figure auditory and visual case sounded off, indicating an obstruction to the rear. 13. On January 29, 2022 the Massachusetts Special Emergency Response Team was activated to assist in searching for potential evidence outside of 34 Fairview Road. When looking at 34 Fairview Road from the street there is a fire hydrant on the far left of the property. Members from CERT located a black Nike sneaker with a white Nike logo along the side. The sneaker located by CERT matches the one sneaker the victim was wearing at the time he was transported by EMS to Good Samaritan Hospital. In the same area two red plastic pieces of a tail light were discovered, consistent to the missing pieces on Karen Reed's black Lexus SUV. One piece of clear plastic piece of a tail light was located in the same area, also consistent with the broken tail light the Lexus SUV. February, 2, 2022-14 Based on the information in the above paragraphs, witness statements, evidence recovered, damage to Karen Reed's Lexus SUV consistent to items located at the scene. The trauma to the victim and statements made by Red to Friends, I believe that the crimes of manslaughter, a violation of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 265, Section 13. Negligent Motor Vehicle Homicide, a violation of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 90, Section 24G and leaving the scene of an accident resulting in death. A violation of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 90, Section 24 was committed at 34 Fairview Road, Canton. The victim being identified as one John O'Keefe, D.O.B. 1208-1975, suffered significant blunt force trauma and the bodily injury sustained by him, proved to be substantial. In that fact establishing the grounds for an issuance of an arrest warrant for Karen Red. Printed name of affiant. Trooper Michael Proctor. Sworn and subscribed to before. K. L. Hughes. Signature of Justice, Clerk Magistrate or Assistant Clerk. Signed under the penalties of perjury. Trial Court of Massachusetts District Court Department. I, the undersigned complainant, request that a criminal complaint issued against the accused charging the offense listed below. If the accused has not been arrested and the charges involve. Date filed. 2-1-2022. Time of Hearing. You are hereby notified that an application for a criminal complaint to issue against you for the offense listed above has been made in this court by the complainant named above. This notice is to inform you that a hearing will be held at this court by a magistrate to determine whether criminal proceedings will be commenced against you in this matter. The hearing will be held at the time and date shown above. You may appear at this time to present your side of the case. You may bring witness ES with you and you may also bring a lawyer, although it is not required that you be represented by counsel. Please bring this notice and report to the clerk magistrate's office upon your arrival at the court. 
The courthouse address is listed above. If you do not appear for your hearing at the time and date noted, criminal complaint may issue against you on that date. By Trooper Everton Cita Castro No. 4283. 2022-0H7-001025. 1. On Tuesday, February 1, 2022, at approximately 1940 hours, I, Trooper Everton de Castro No. 4283 responded to 481 Gilbert Street in the city of Mansfield. Norfolk SPDU detectives and VFAS were on scene and had taken Karen Red DOB 0226-1980 into custody on a warrant on the original charges of 1. CH. 265-13A Manslaughter, 2. CH. 9024 GA Motor Vehicle Homicide by Negligent Operation and 3. CH. 9024 B Leaving Scene of Personal Injury and Death Out of Stoughton District Court. 2. Upon arrival at the residence Reed was placed into the rear of my cruiser without incident. Reed was then transported to the Milton State Police Barracks for processing. When we arrived at the barracks, Reed was booked without incident and the bail commissioner was contacted. Bail Commissioner Comerford ordered Red be held without bail pending her court appearance.